item is not up for political question. It's not something that was created because it was it belonged to one party or another. This was one of the deadliest attacks to ever target Coptic Christians, a religious minority accounting for roughly 10% of Egypt's population. The governor says many people of faith feel that their religious liberty is under attack by government action. Much of that terror directed at Christians. The Muslims in Gaza are more radical, Islamic radicals than in the West Bank or any area in the Middle East. They started with burning of the churches, killing the pastors, and uh, killing the members, closing them down. Around the world, much of religious persecution is directed at Christians. The governor signed the bill in a private ceremony this morning. You could see him surrounded by a number of religious leaders in this picture tweeted by his office. My dad, they asked him to deny Christ, in which he refused to have uh, right hands. Then uh, he refused the haircut to the elbow again, in which he refused before they shot him thrice uh, at the head, the forehead, the neck, and chest. Despite the hardships, these displaced Christians are firm believers in the power of prayer. Delegates to this very auspicious 17 quinquennial session of the Caribbean Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. When we think about religious liberty and public affairs, we go immediately to the text where Paul is writing to Timothy, saying, This know also that in the last days perilous time shall come. Now the Greek word perilous, all right, that's the English, but the Greek word is chalipoi. And it comes from an experience, from a story that created trauma. The Greek military commander Cleatus would summon all right, his subjects before him and without any just cause sentenced them to death. So anybody who came before him, they came living in constant fear. They expected the worst form of treatment and persecution. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful and holy without natural affection, uh, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, uh, fierce, despised of those that are good. And then verse 12 provides uh, the crown men act. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's amazing that one of our mantras in this whole department is Article 18 of the 1948 United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. Article 18 states, you have a right to choose a religion, a right to change a religion, and a right to have no religion at all. Of course, countries in the Middle East and some religions reject it as an attempt to impose Western propaganda upon Middle Eastern citizens. That is how they see it. So they didn't support it whatsoever. Saudi Arabia didn't support it. That's 1948 history. The USSR did not support it. And the apartheid-driven country, South Africa, didn't support it whatsoever. But we believe that, as Dr. John Grass says, that freedom is a gift from God to all mankind. Not a gift from one man to another man or a group of men and women and children, but a gift from God to man. That is what we have. So, we started off 2016. 2016, our annual Congress uh, was in St. Kitts. Twenty seventeen, we went to Fort Lauderdale, United States of America, for Earl. All right, that's right. Their Congress, the Global Congress. Of course, you know we have Earl, and we have Carla, and then we have Trala and Bala. That's Barbados Religious Liberty Association, and all the other liberty associations in this great Caribbean Union Conference. So 2016, I tell you, we went to St. Kitts. 2017, Port Lauderdale, USA. 2018, we went to Guyana. And you will see in a short while the Libertaires. Yes, we had drama with the Libertaires drama group. Just look at them perform at this time. This fight is really, really hard. Ah! Look in there. 
I threw in three of them and I'm feeling four. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come out here. Not a stroke of hair from their head is gone. And they don't even smell like smoke. <laughs> 2019, we went to St. Martin. We had a glorious time there. And of course, uh, we had Pastor Marvin Smith. Yes, he came from Guyana preaching. The first time. Ladies and gentlemen, dear delegates, in 2020, we in full pandemic mode. Did we give up? Did we surrender? Did we say we're not having any Congress whatsoever? No. We had the virtual congress, and you will see clips from it right now. Some of the churches were able to observe Pearl Day in physical space, while others had to utilize Zoom. Our annual Pearl Convention was a resounding success. The theme was No Greater Sacrifice, Sabbath 21st November 2020, and our chief celebrant was Dr. Clive. P. Dutton. We continue to be prayerful and resilient. We believe that one day soon, freedom will not be a dream. So, let us engage in some of the changes we made. Number one, we looked at the issue of emphasizing, giving greater emphasis to public affairs. You know, we have public affairs and religious liberty. Of course, public affairs is about ministering to the cries for those who are unjustly treated. It's a cry for justice. And then we built a bridge, tried to create a synergy between global missions, spread of prophecy, and religious liberty. Of course, I should tell you that religious liberty builds the platform for global mission. So after we defend everyone, and by the way, we might not agree to a particular theology, but we agree that everyone has the right to choose their own theology and to join the religion of choice. That is a God-given choice. We went even further than that, and we thank God for Susan Seeley. Yes, and all the Carla members, Leslie Charles, Steve Bing, Anthony Hall, Yes, and all Ian Green and all the rest of them, Onesi Lafleur. Because what we did in this last quinquennium is to give that emphasis on the cry for justice. In fact, there are some fields who set up an association of lawyers, association of attorneys, and that was a great innovation for us in Antigua. Pastor Dr. Carson Green even had, you know, video presentations on the issue of justice and drug addiction and criminality. A model for conservation must include a model for justice. And this is where we emphasize this last quinquennium, 2060 to 2020, the issue of developing a network of support groups. Many times we talk about conservation, but a new convert comes into the church, is faced with job loss, family trauma, you know, depression, but there's no structure. So we have developed a number of support groups. The Sunshine Ministry for people who are ill in a hospital. New Hope for those baptized in prison, and those who are ex-prisoners and get baptized after they come out from prison. And then we have the issue of courage and limited pleas for those guys who want to leave their lifestyle of criminality and ganghood. And then we have friends forever. Those who come here to church get baptized, but they're still addicted. They have a support group to relate to. They have an institution called the Ready Center to relate to. They're not left alone. And then we have the Heart to Heart ministry. And that ministry deals with the issue of those who have AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases. 
those who are terminally ill, those who are depressed, uh, this ministry takes care of them. So we are saying, uh, we have to minister, that is where public affairs uh, relates to religious liberty. Because when you use your God-given freedom to make a choice and change your religion, and join God's remnant family, but you have a plethora of issues coming at you and discouraging you, there must be a support network that helps you to cope, you hear the word? A support network that helps you to cope with all these challenges where we display the unconditional love of Christ, the agape, if you please, where we show compassion. You know, that, that is a very important word as we fight the battles of religious freedom and we become a voice for the voiceless. Let me give the report, if you please. The objectives for the quinquennium and the actual results. Letters and interviews, all in defense of the voiceless and those who are facing religious liberty issues and persecution. The objective, 750. Actual, what we accomplished, 681. Participation in interfaith dialogue, this is the DNA of our department. 100. What we accomplished? 66. Congress. You know, that is the issue of the number of non-SDA leaders to attend our Congresses. We had 144. Actual, 74. Workshops. Our objective for the Quinquennium, 100. The actual figure accomplished? 95. PAL directors in local churches, and this is based on the reports we have received. 735, the objective. The accomplished figure, 365, so we have work to do there. Meeting with government and public officials, 310. We actually met with 237 across the union. Problem solved. We had a goal of 175. Actual, 244. We praise God for that public evangelism now you know some people do not see religious liberty and public evangelism are synchronizing but we think differently every department in this remnant family must move forward in public evangelism our objective was to have 20 we had nine with 44 baptisms so we have some work to do there festivals uh, festivals involve musical concerts and people testifying of God came through for them and provided religious freedom. 65 festivals, our objective accomplished, 43. Meeting with non-SDA leaders, uh, this again is one of the DNA features of this department, 400. What we accomplished? We met with 372 non-SDA leaders. We are coming to the close of time. And as I close this presentation, I want to quote from Dr. Christine Schumacher, wrote a book, Islamic View of Major Christian Teachings. She gives a provocative description of apostasy in Islam. When a Muslim repudiated his faith, she says he rebels against the order and the Islamic leaders see him as endangering the security and stability of the society. She's quoting Islamic experts now. Only he who believes in God and the divinely revealed Quran and who obeyed the Sharia is able to become a competent citizen. Whereas the ungodly are enemies of society. The reputed, repeated duty is to confess the faith by fulfilling the five daily prayers, by fasting during Ramadan. This is the medium by which the citizen's morale is conveyed so that Islamic State links full civil rights to the confession of the true faith. This is how they see the confession of the true faith. So if you leave the faith, you're regarded as an infidel and should be punished. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in the whole world as a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. In spite of the challenges, in spite of the very steep mountains, in spite of the fact that we have to face traumatic experiences, let us hold on to God and let us keep preaching the gospel 
of religious liberty. 